Greetings and welcome to Gripping Horror. The underwater caverns behind K. Kolka have held a sinister fascination for divers ever since they were discovered during the 1970s. The unexplored caves are interconnected and are believed to be among the largest in the world. A dive shop at San Pedro brought seven divers over to dive the giant cave of Kolka. Five lived to tell about it. It was a classic dive in the respect that, if anything could be done wrong, they did it. Their tales serve as both a celebration of lives dedicated to exploration and a chilling reminder of the do's and don'ts when dangers lurking beneath the ocean's surface. Aldolfo Ayonsa was born on February the 20th, 1950, in the quiet coastal town of Scalac, Quintano Ru, Mexico. His family, like many in the area, relied on the sea for their livelihood, and at an early age, Aldolfo developed a deep connection with the water. When he was just a baby, the Onso family moved to San Pedro and Bagris Cay, Belize. This small fishing village, with its turquoise waters and vibrant coral reefs, became Aldolfo's new home and playground. The sea was more than just a source of food or income for Aldolfo. It was where he felt most alive. As a young boy, Adolfo was often found by the water's edge, his feet dangling off the docks, his eyes scanning the horizon for the next adventure. By the time he was 12, he was already joining his father and elder brother on diving expeditions, collecting lobster from the reefs that stretched across the Belizean coastline. These early experiences taught him how to navigate the often treacherous underwater terrain skills that would one day define his career as one of the region's most respected dive masters. Aldolfo wasn't just any diver, he was exceptional. By 18, he had already built a reputation for his remarkable lung capacity and ability to remain calm in the most stressful underwater situations. Aldolfo could dive and only use 1,000 PSI on a 60-minute dive. This is highly impressive because it demonstrated exceptional control over his breathing and efficient air consumption. Most divers use significantly more air in the same time frame, especially at deeper depths or when exerting themselves. His ability to maintain such a low air usage suggested a deep level of experience, a calm demeanor, and an advanced understanding of how to move and breathe underwater efficiently. His peers would often marvel at how effortlessly he could move through the water, sometimes using only half the air his fellow divers would need. This skill would later become a trademark of his, earning him a place among the top divers in the region. Aldolfo's cousin, Ramon Nunes, had been the first certified diver on the Ambrogius K, and it wasn't long before Aldolfo followed in his footsteps. Along with his childhood friends, Eduardo Brown and Gil Gonzalez, Aldolfo became one of the most sought-after dive instructors, taking tourists and adventurers alike into the stunning underwater caves and coral reefs of Belize. By 1969, at just 19 years old, Adolfo married his childhood sweetheart, Yolanda, and together they raised four children. It wasn't long before Adolfo's passion for diving turned into a thriving business. He became one of the first native Belizeans to own and operate a dive shop, the famous Dancing Dolphin, which was affiliated with Ramon's village a premier dive destination. Aldolfo's reputation wasn't just built on his diving skills. Those who knew him always mentioned his infectious smile, his love for life, and his constant willingness to help others. Whether he was teaching a novice diver how to breathe calmly underwater, or 
leading experienced divers through some of the most intricate cave systems, Aldofo exuded confidence and warmth. His clients trusted him, and his fellow divers respected him. But even the best divers, those who command the sea like they belong to it, can sometimes fall prey to its unforgiving nature. The Keikolka Giant Cave, located beneath the island of Keikolka, Belize, is one of the largest and most intricate underwater cave systems in the world. This ancient cave system stretches thousands of feet in length, featuring narrow tunnels, vast chambers, and a maze-like layout that challenges even the most experienced divers. The cave is known for its highly decorated interior, with stunning stalactites, stalagmites, and fossil formations that date back thousands of years. The cave has not been surveyed, but it has been measured to be 670 meters long by 550 meters wide, and the ceiling height ranges from 7 to 25 meters. Diving depths within the cave vary considerably, with sections reaching depths of over 33 meters. The cave's tomb line plunges down to 46 meters, while other areas like the swimming pool hover around 18 to 19 feet. The cave system is interconnected by numerous small passageways, some so narrow that divers must remove their tanks to fit through. This confined environment significantly increases the risks of disorientation and entrapment. The water inside the cave is typically clear, but can become cloudy with silt, particularly in the more remote and unexplored areas. The entrance to Keikolka Giant Cave is notorious for being difficult to navigate, requiring divers to be both full cave certificated and decompression procedures certified. The entrance is a 3 to 5 meter diameter pit with a constriction or two that drops to about 24 meters in a single large room. The room has been explored by Italian divers and by Americans. The various explorations have left scades of dive lines radiating, circumnavigating, and crisscrossing throughout the room. Following these set lines can be very confusing for a diver and has an increased risk of causing drownings. Once in the room, divers encounter both stunning geological features and technical challenges, such as low visibility, sharp turns, and sudden depth changes. Despite these dangers, the allure of the cave continues to draw divers from around the world, eager to explore its beauty and mystery. June the 2nd, 1985, began like any other day for Aldelfo. The sun was shining. The waters of Keikoka were a mesmerizing shade of blue and Aldofo was excited to lead a group of tourists from Houston on a cave diving expedition. Others in the diving party included Nico Verreira, 27, Mike Perez, 20, Damien Vasquez, 18, and Tom Walker, 19, the only other American. The group was especially eager that day. They had already experienced a full morning of diving and exploring the vibrant coral reefs, and now they were ready for the most thrilling part of their adventure, diving into a mysterious underwater cave. According to the owner of the dive shop on Kay Kolka, the divers came from Hamburgers Kay and wanted to rent gear to dive the giant cave. He warned against diving there and would not rent them gear because his general policy is not to rent gear, but sell dive trips. His group returned to San Pedro on Embergas Cay, procured some equipment, and came back to dive the cave. Before embarking on their dive, the group made what would become an extremely erroneous and reckless decision. After spending the morning diving in the beautiful waters of Kay Kolka, they decided to stop by a local bar for a few drinks 
which was confirmed by several witnesses on site. The carefree atmosphere, combined with the excitement of the upcoming cave dive, led them to let their guard down. They shared stories, laughed, and indulged in several rounds of beers as the Belizean sun beat down on them. For a moment, the thrill of adventure overpowered any concerns about safety. Aldolfo, usually known for his professionalism and caution, didn't raise any objections. He joined the group in having a drink, eager to keep the mood light and carefree. They were confident in their skills, and the buzz from the alcohol only added to the sense of invincibility. The group had no second thoughts as they geared up and prepared to dive straight into one of the most complex cave systems in the world. No one paused to consider the potential consequences of diving after drinking, and as they boarded the boat, their carefree attitude followed them into the water. With no one to voice concern, the group dove into the depths of the cave, blissfully unaware that their negligence would soon lead to a tragedy none of them could have foreseen. Due to their impairment from the alcohol, their preparation was far from thorough. They hadn't used a continuous guideline, a crucial tool for navigating underwater caves. They were also missing backup regulators and other essential equipment. In their overconfidence, they ignored basic safety protocols, leaving them vulnerable to K. Kolka's giant cave. As stated previously, the giant cave is a stunning yet dangerous sight, known for its crystal clear waters and intricate cave systems. The entrance to the cave lies hidden beneath the surface, an inviting but ominous gateway to the unknown. As the group descended into the cave with no guideline, the water around them was eerily calm. Aldofo and Art were the first to enter through the narrow opening that led to a series of interconnecting caves and tunnels, which appeared to stretch on for miles. Every other person seemed to have light, single tanks without backup regulators or octopuses. And their plan was to turn around at 80 feet which is known as a moderately narrow section of the cave. The light from above began to fade as they ventured deeper into the abyss. Aldolfo, leading the group with his years of experience guiding his every move, was closely followed by the rest of the divers. Their excitement mixed with a growing sense of unease. At the jog, the third person in line, Mike Perez, felt very uneasy and wanted to get out. He later related that he became alarmed when Art approached him in the darkness, apparently in a state of panic, and then disappeared from view. The last three divers to enter, including Mike, decided it was best to head back to the surface. Still at the jog, both Aldolfo and Art, still in the water, began to struggle. The cave's labyrinth-like design made it easy to lose direction, and soon both men found themselves disorientated, which was only exacerbated by the alcohol. The water pressure, the narrow confines, and the growing darkness heightened their anxiety. Art Williams, who had been right behind Aldafo, panicked. His breathing quickened, and he began to drift uncontrollably through the cave's passageways. The rest of the group, still following the dive plan to the surface, hadn't realized the extent of the unfolding emergency. Upon the three divers reaching the surface, Mike, who was the last person to see Art's frantic movements, quickly alerted the safety divers on the surface. The remaining divers scrambled to understand what was happening, but by then, it was too late. Aldofo and Art were lost in the cave's depths their lives hanging in the balance. Aldolfo's younger brother, Peter Esso, who was on the surface at the time, acted quickly, along with another fellow team member. As they ventured deeper into the cave, the passageways became narrower and the visibility worsened. 
The once pristine waters were now clouded with silt, making it nearly impossible to see more than a few feet ahead. When they got to the jog, they ran into Art, who was disorientated and in a state of panic. After they got to him, they waited until he became unconscious and then took him to the surface. He had 500 psi left in his tank when he was taken out of the water and when asked if they gave him CPR, they said yes. They put the regulator in his mouth and pushed the purge button. Despite their best efforts to revive him, it was clear that Art had drowned, which was confirmed by a post-mortem examination performed in Belize City. A big question still remained at hand. Where was Aldalfo? They started bound diving, looking for Aldalfo. One of the team members made five dives that afternoon without any knowledge of the decompression tables. When another diver diving in the sea returned from his dive, they stopped him to see if he could help them. The diver told them that he had just finished a deep dive and would have too much decompression time to do. Since it was three and a half hours since Aldofo had made his entry, the diver didn't think there was a chance of him being alive. The search for Aldolfo would last several agonizing days. Specifically, attempts to find Aldolfo lasted all day Monday and continued into Tuesday and Wednesday. Divers from San Pedro, K. Kolka, and even the British garrison joined the efforts to find him. They scoured the cave, navigating its treacherous twists and turns, hoping to find Aldolfo alive. But as the days passed, hope began to fade. The cave's depths, with its unforgiving darkness and intricate passageways, had claimed Belize's national treasure. Adolfo's body was never recovered. They concede that he must have drowned, trapped perhaps in a crevice or having lost his way in the darkness and was unable to find breathing space. The news of Aldolfo's death sent shockwaves through the community. In San Pedro, where he had grown up and become a beloved figure, the loss was felt deeply. Friends, family and fellow divers mourned the passing of a man who had given so much to his community. A memorial service was held in both his and Art's honour, with a 35-boat procession to the site of the accident. There. Garlands of flowers were laid at the entrance to the cave. A solemn tribute to men whose love for the ocean had ultimately claimed their life. A plaque was also placed in front of the cave with Aldofo's name on it to honour their national hero. Aldofo's wife, Yolanda, and their four children, Zobi, Mari, Tulita, and Adelfito, were left devastated. The man who had been their rock, their source of joy and love, was gone. His death left a void that would never be filled. Art Samuels left behind his parents, Molly and Echo Samuels, his brother Philip and his young daughter, Erin Reza. For his family, the loss of Art will never be something they can fully heal from. In the weeks that followed, a letter from Jim Coke, a close friend of Aldofo and fellow diver, surfaced. In the letter, Jim detailed the events leading up to the tragic dive and the mistakes that had been made. According to Jim, the group had failed to follow proper safety protocols. They hadn't used a continuous guideline, a crucial tool for navigating underwater caves they were also missing backup regulators and other essential equipment. But perhaps the most significant mistake was the decision to dive after consuming alcohol. Alcohol, even in small amounts, can impair a diver's ability to make quick decisions, react to changing conditions and maintain proper buoyancy in the confined, disorientating environment. Along with Jim Coke's analysis, Frank Bountings also weighed in on the incident. He remarked, 
untrained open water divers without a continuous guideline, not saving the recommended two thirds of their air for the exit and lacking proper lighting, this sounds like an all too familiar recipe for disaster. Sadly. Today, Aldofo Ioso's legacy lives on, not just in the diving community, but through his family. His son, Aldofo Ioso Jr., followed his father's footsteps and is now one of the Paddy certified dive instructors at Ramon's village. Aldofo Jr. teaches scuba diving to both tourists and locals keeping alive the love for the sport that his father was so passionate about. Aldofo's humanitarian efforts in his community are still remembered. He was a proud member of the Lions Club and regularly donated his time to help children in need. Whether he was organizing charity events or raising funds for local projects, Aldofo was always giving back, ensuring that his community thrived. Though they were taken far too soon, Arts and Adelfo's love for the ocean, their joy for life, and their dedication to their family and community remain a beacon of light for all who knew them. They were men whose lives may have ended in the deep, dark waters of the sea, but whose spirit continues to shine brightly above. May Art and Adelfo rest in peace. This has been Gripping Horror. I hope to see you in the next one.